Hello, everyone, and we're glad you can attend Attitude's weekly ADHD Experts webinar, our first of 2020. Happy New Year. Just an introductory note before we get started. If you've listened to one of our webinars before, you know we offer attendees a certificate of attendance. When the webinar ends, a post-event survey will pop up. It will list three questions about the quality of the webinar, followed by three questions titled required for certificate. If you would like a certificate of attendance emailed to you, you should answer those three questions. If you don't want one, you don't have to answer the questions, obviously. Now, today's topic is a challenge for every person diagnosed with ADHD. The art and science of organizing one, one's home or apartment or condo. If you've been struggling with organization for what seems like forever, it doesn't mean there's something wrong with you. The key to success is to work with your ADHD brain, not against it. If you've been trying to organize your home, it's likely you are struggling with one or more executive functions, things like flexible thinking, task initiation, impulse and emotional control. With the right strategies and insights, the ADHD brain can learn organizational skills that will work over a lifetime. It's never too late to start. And please remember, your worth as a person has nothing to do with how organized your house is. So we are very happy to have Linda Rogley with us today, who will give us her road-tested tips for preventing our piles of stuff from overwhelming our brains, our self-worth, and our life. Linda is an ADHD coach, author and founder of the Adiva Network for ADHD, Women 40 and Better. She is an internationally recognized expert in midlife and senior ADHD and works tirelessly to help her clients get organized. She co-created the popular ADHD Women's Palooza and ADHD Parents Palooza, two weeks of online interviews with top ADHD experts. She has contributed chapters to several ADHD books and, of course, writes for Attitude magazine. You can ask questions of Linda anytime during the webinar. We will try to get to as many of them as we can after her presentation. To download the presentation slides of this webinar, click the drop-down menu labeled Event Resources on the bottom left of your screen. If you do not see the Event Resources tab, you need to refresh the page. So now, finally, after all that housekeeping, uh, let me turn it over to Linda. Great to have you here today, Linda. I know we'll, oh, I know so we'll I learn a that. lot and also be entertained in the process. Uh, yeah, well, I, I can always <laughs> promise entertaining because I'm ADHD <laughs> myself. And, you know, all, all of us ADHD folks are pretty darned entertaining and exciting and creative. <laughs> so we're going to talk about conquering clutter the ADHD way in a creative ADHD way. How about that? So let's start with once upon a time, since we're in the Star Wars mode these days, once upon a time in a bedroom, not that far away, Florida to be exact, there lived a woman who had this on her bed. Well, she found that she was working a lot in, in her bed and she woke up one day to find herself sleeping next to this huge, enormous pile of papers. And she decided she was gonna take a picture of it because she was so, she was so upset and, and frustrated with herself because how did this happen? How did this how did this pile of stuff plus you can't even see what's on the floor and you can imagine that there's on the stuff on the floor too um that how in the world did that happen to her so she's going to take a picture of it now because maybe it was going to be get better later we'll come back to her we're going to call her karen just for the sake of argument that's not her real name but let's face it uh, clutter is a problem it says 54 percent on the slide 54 percent of older adhd adults say disorganization is a serious problem according to the quality of life journal did you know there was a quality of life journal i didn't until i found this out 40% of ADHD women say that disorganization is their number one issue. And of course, you know, disorganization and being you know, having a hard time staying organized is listed in the DSM-5 criteria for an ADHD diagnosis. So clutter creates chaotic living spaces, according to a study called The Dark Side of Home, Assessing Possession Clutter on Subjective Well-Being. It was done um, 2016, so about four years ago now, three and a half, four years ago. It negatively impacts our, our mental health and it taints our sense of home. So what's the danger of clutter? The author of, the, one of the authors of this study says, it becomes so overwhelming, it chips away at your well-being, drowning in a sea of stuff, 
when the sheer space taken up by the clutter becomes an obstacle in your daily life, you stop seeing your friends and family, you don't work as much. And as it grows, it demands more and more attention. Everything else that's important, in key word important, gets forced out of your life. And I know I have certainly felt that way in my life. So what I found in another study by the same authors, as a matter of fact, is that clutter is the best predictor of procrastination. Ah, a key word for ADHD. And my suspicion is that the opposite is true as well. Procrastination is probably also a good predictor of clutter as well. So why in the world are we in particular so good at clutter? Everybody has trouble with it sometimes, but ADHD folks are really, really good at it, don't you think? So, duh, it's our ADHD brain, especially that prefrontal cortex. And that's where that frontal lobe, as you can see in this slide, um, that's where all that executive function um, happens. It's where our planning happens. It's where initiation is supposed to happen. It's where completion is supposed to happen. But we have a little bit of a loosey-goosey connection in there neurotransmitter-wise. So that's why it's so difficult for us. It's our working memories, which is also part of that prefrontal cortex. When we put something down, five minutes later, we're saying, where did I put that thing? And you could say, well, that could be age related too, especially in my case, and especially in the case of anybody else who was born in the 50s like I am, but like I was. But the truth is, is that our working memories do cause clutter because we just can't remember. Remember that we need our stuff visible. Now, I wish I could tell you that this was Karen's office. However, I am embarrassed to tell you that this was my office some eight to 10 years ago. And I took a picture of it just in the, for the same reason Karen did. I wanted to remember how bad it can get. And of course, you can't see the stuff on the floor here either. But we need our stuff visible because of those working memories. We need to be able to see it to find it, which is difficult. That's like, I need the clutter to see it, but I want it to be neat so that I can stay you know, somewhat organized. As I mentioned, we can't find things. So let's say we're looking for our chainsaw. We can't find it, so we buy another one. So now we have uh, two chainsaws. That's called more clutter, right? And it's so easy these days to get more stuff. Amazon, any place that you order online, delivers it right to your door. And of course, it takes a lot of wonderful, inventive, and researching time for our ADHD brains to be fascinated by getting the best price, et cetera, et cetera, which takes away from our uh, organizing time. Sometimes it's impulsivity gone wild. When we're shopping online, it's like, well, I, I was shopping for this, but ooh, isn't this really cool? And I think, you know, I've always needed one of those, but I didn't think to find it here. And now here it is, and it's on sale, and let's just get it, and it'll be delivered to my house. I don't know about you guys. This may not be an ADHD thing, but we stockpile. A lot of us stockpile our favorite things. Like, I find something that really fits, and it really, it's just the right color, so I buy it again. And I buy two or three, or actually I buy four of them because, you know, they might stop making them. And this color might not be available next spring. And what am I going to do if I lose them? If I get, like, I'm messy, I get things on it all the time, then I have to get rid of it. So the question becomes, is that stockpiling or is that falling into the hoarding realm? Now, I looked up the definition of hoarding, and this came from the Anxiety and Depression Association of America. It says... Hoarding is the compulsive purchasing, acquiring, searching, and saving of items that have little or no value. Now, little of no value or no value to whom? That's my question in this. But with deleterious effects, emotional, physical, social, financial, even legal. Some people are actually kicked out of their homes because of their hoarding issues, as you've seen on hoarders on TV, for the hoarder and for family members. So what's the difference between hoarding and ADHD? It, it looks the same, but it's very different in, the, in its pathology. Hoarders collect a lot of possessions, convinced they're worth something. You can paint it or fix it up, and I can resell it. It'll be worth a lot more when I, when I um, fix it, and then I'll make money on it, right? ADHD folks collect possessions to replace lost items or to, um, we buy lots and lots of organizing containers, loads of organizing and, and planners, anything with the organizing name on it, we're a sucker for that stuff. And it also remember that buying things is a dopamine hit. So that's one of the reasons that we collect things like that. And hoarders have a lot of distress at the thought of getting rid of those possessions. Um, no matter whether it's a, an old piece of newspaper because you've seen those stacks of newspapers or whether it's something that it literally is valuable but adhd folks are dying to get rid of stuff we just don't have anywhere have any idea of where to start so there's a big difference now don't don't misunderstand people who are adhd can also be hoarders and i've had people say to me i think i may have fallen into that realm but my question to you is how loud is your clutter 
because my clutter, when I walk by, it says, put me away, put me away. And I'm like, I'm too busy doing something else. I have to keep focused on what I'm doing. And then the clutter stays there. And I'll say, oh, well, I'll put you away later. But how loud is your clutter? My guess is right after the first of the year and, and our resolutions to do better with our clutter and organization and a lot of other things, diet, who knows, exercise, um, probably your clutter is pretty loud right now. And you're like, I'm done. I am so done. So the question is, what can we do about it? This cartoon says, I'm the clutter fairy. I'll come back. I'm going to need a much bigger wand. Don't we wish that was the answer? I wish I had a clutter fairy or maybe um, like um, in Mary Poppins when she wiggles her nose and spits pot and everything just puts itself away. Unfortunately, we have to be a little more practical. So here are seven practical ideas for conquering ADHD clutter, and we'll hope that these will inspire you to tackle it. So now we do drum roll, dun, 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 number one. The cartoon says, now here's Diane, our home organ organize, organization expert on how to get rid of that clutter problem once and for all. Diane, and Diane says, yes, don't buy stuff. And the moderator says, okay, thanks, Diane, and that's the end of her presentation. So actually, that is the truth, don't buy stuff. I know it's too late now, it's after the holidays, whether you celebrate Christmas or any of the other myriad of holidays that happened in the last 60 days, we have stuff, right? So how do we buy, how, why, how can we stop buying stuff? Well, think about it, don't buy big stuff. This cartoon says the guy is carrying the world on his shoulders and she says, must you always go to Costco? I mean, this is Atlas coming home with the world. Um, so big stuff is gonna make more of a mess and it's gonna be more to store. So remember that the more stuff you buy or find, if you are a, a you know shopper or somebody that gives you things, accept the things that you accept, the more space it requires, the more space it takes in your life and in your home, and therefore the more care and time it takes to take care of all this stuff. I had that, I had that one of those eureka moments a few years ago when I realized I'm spending all my time taking care of stuff. I don't wanna take care of stuff. I wanna take care of me or people or the things that I choose to take care of, not all the stuff I've collected. And I started getting rid of stuff. So back to shopping, is shopping self-medication? You bet it is. As I mentioned previously, um, shopping gives us that dopamine hit. And I read some research that says just um, window shopping doesn't do it. We actually have to pay for something to get that full amount of dopamine hit. So shopping or getting something new can be intoxicating or some people believe, you know, I, I've worked so hard and I've done so much and I, 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 did, I did what I said I was gonna do. That was really hard. I deserve to have something new. So they buy something. So that spark lights up our brain and then, duh, the thrill is gone just like that. So we need something new. It is, a, it can be an addiction, right? Look at these ADHD storage units. I had a client one time, actually it was Karen, the same woman who we talked, who we saw in the first bed, if you will. Um, she had three storage units she'd had for 10 years. She didn't know what was in them. Those storage units cost a lot of money. I think it was like $100 a month per storage unit. And she only decided to get rid of some of this stuff when she realized, you know, my budget's really taking a hit here. That's, you know, more than $3,000 a year, close to 4,000. So the more we buy, the more we have to store, we don't need to be sp spending money on storage units unless you have a 200 square foot apartment. But remember that all that clutter used to be money. I'm gonna say it again. All that clutter you got around there used to be money. And it's a whole different webinar, but money is also an issue for a lot of folks with ADHD. So be honest about your finances. Is it realistic for me to buy this or, oh, it'll be okay just this once. It's really hard to take that breath. It's that ADHD pause, if you will, for us to say, you know, I, I don't think I can really afford this right now, but it looks so much, it, I love it so much, but I've always, and it's the right color. No, I'm not, it's hard to say no to ourselves. So one way you can do this is just let it steep for a few days. Don't purchase it now. Um, just leave it in your shopping cart. And nowadays, you go back to that same website, it's still going to be in your shopping cart. Or even more interesting, um, it'll follow you home. I was looking at something in William Sonoma, and I had looked at it, and it it sent me an email that said, oh, your pics are worth another look. And I'm like, oh, that might make me go back there. And I realized, wait a minute, this is just marketing. I can't do that. So this cartoon says, yeah, the features are nice, but how do you think it'll look in the garage draped with laundry and stuff? They're talking about an exercise bike here. That's what we have to think about. How is that stuff going to play out in the future? So if you do buy stuff, there's a rule. It's one in, 
and one out. You buy a new coffee maker, get rid of the old coffee maker. But you know, it's still good and I could still use it and somebody else could, yeah, somebody else could use it. Goodwill or Salvation Army or your nephew who just moved into his own apartment. So here's your organizing system, don't buy stuff so suggestions. Do I overshop? even at sales or thrift shops, what are the real reasons I overshop? Like to feel alive, is it I deserve it, impulsivity? And one way to rein in my shopping is leave stuff in the cart, as I mentioned, or see a therapist to deal with some of those deserved issues. All these questions, by the way, I'm gonna go through them quickly. They're in the handout that you guys will get or have gotten already. It's a PDF handout so that you can go through these yourself. Number two, get rid of stuff. Yeah, like you didn't already know that, right? So these are decisions, 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 right? It's that ADHD, um, it's that prefrontal cortex again. How do I make decisions about what to keep and what to give away? It's the 80-20 rule. They call it the Pareto Principle. He's the one that created this many years ago, and it wasn't about organizing, but I'm going to apply it to organizing. 80% of the time, we wear or use 20% of what's stored in our files, in our closets, in our drawers. And for us, remember, when things are out of sight, they're out of mind. So the more stuff that's in storage, the less we're even going to use it or even see it. So just putting things away isn't enough. We actually have to get rid of them. So I had a friend who, another client, who um, had boxes that she'd moved into an apartment in Florida. And this was another person in Florida, by the way, not Karen. And she had boxes everywhere that she hadn't unpacked for three years. And her kid said, Mom, you got to do something about this. So they said, you sit over there. And we'll sit over here, we're going to open the boxes, we're going to hold these things up one by one, and you've got three seconds to tell me whether you want to keep it or whether you want to get rid of it. And she was not allowed to touch it. Judith Kohlberg, who wrote the book on, on organizing for ADHD and for other folks too, says that we own things by touching them. So if you touch it while you're sorting it, you're more likely to keep it. She got through so many boxes doing, during, doing that, and her kids were so proud of her because a lot of things she said, nah, I don't want it, I don't want it, I don't want it. She didn't try them on if they were closed. She didn't say, oh my gosh, I got to do something with this. But a lot of times, remember that ADHD folks are emotional. That's part of our makeup. We have that you know, lack of inhibition of emotionality. So when we have things that have an emotional attachment, I was just going through my mom's clothes just a little bit ago thinking maybe it's time to get rid of them. She died two years ago and they remind me of her. I will keep a few things of hers, but I'm not going to keep all of the things that I bought for her. So we have that emotional attachment. We have to ask ourselves, what can we, can we take pictures of things? Can we digitize things? Can we archive things? And yeah, we can do that. Um, a friend of mine uh, was downsizing. She downsized from a three bedroom or four bedroom big house in the suburbs to a two bedroom uh, little apartment when she got divorced. And then she downsized to a studio. And every time she downsized, she had to get rid of more and more stuff. So downsizing is a great way to do this as well. But she brought her daughter in and said, is this important to you? And, and so they looked at it together. They were, you know, papers from first grade and, you know, her handprint and that kind of stuff. And her daughter said, yeah, that was really nice. I loved seeing that stuff, mom, but you don't need to keep it anymore. Even more important, her mom had been dragging around this huge antique organ that had been in the family for year, decades. And she says, I've been saving it for you. And she said, but I don't even want it, mom. I, I, I love it. I remember it. It's just not something that I really want. So here are the stories we tell ourselves. I've loved this for years, but the question is, does it still fit? But I might need it someday, or maybe tomorrow, or maybe not. But Aunt Margaret, or Uncle Sam, or Tom, or whoever gave this to me, so what if they gave it to you? They're not going to show up on your doorstep and say, where was that thing I bought you five years ago? And then I want to give it to my kids eventually, and as I mentioned in this story, she didn't really want it. Or it was on sale, my favorite but would I have paid full price for it? I finally have gotten ruthless and about, about doing some of these things. So I'm getting rid of a lot of the things that I bought on sale. It's like, you know, just don't buy those things. Back, refer to number one. You need to downsize yourself just as, I, just as my friend did. And we can do that without downsizing our living spaces, which gives us a lot more <gasps> breathing room. We can actually walk around and not run into things or step over things. But remember that that stuff that you keep needs a home too not in a storage closet or, or a storage unit. And it needs to be out where you can enjoy it. And this one is even better because it's on shelves, which ooh, they look like glass shelves. I thought it was enclosed because those glass shelves would have to be dusted. You have to keep that in mind too. We're cleaning this stuff. So I told you I was being ruthless, but unless your name is Ruth, I invite you to be ruthless as well. Get rid of stuff. Coco Chanel, the famous designer, had it right. She said, 
before you leave, take off one accessory. One accessory that you've put on, and that same thing applies to getting rid of stuff. You can always get rid of one more thing. Once upon a time, I got rid of 50% of my winter clothing, and then I went back again, and I got rid of more of it. So I had actually gotten rid of 80%. Remember that 80-20 rule? I gotten rid of 80% of my winter clothes, and only one piece of, those, of that clothing did I ever really regret getting rid of. One piece out of all that. And believe me, I had more than one piece I got rid of. So I invite you to make more piles. So the way you do this, this is getting rid of stuff in, in, a, in a systematic way. Ooh, systems, ADHD. Um, you're going to put some over here in the recycling pile, some in the, in the cell pile, some in the keep pile, or you can just put it back where it goes, some in the trash pile, some in the donate pile. And then how do you keep those piles separated? Because then they kind of fall in on each other. Ah, containers, one of my favorite things. So I've used buckets a lot. I bought big paint buckets from, from uh, Lowe's and I was sorting papers into once upon a time. Um, laundry baskets, I've used those for papers. You can use them for clothes. You can use them for stuff that does, it's not going to fit in something you know small. So use anything that you can because when you start sorting, you're going to get interrupted and you're going to have, the, you don't want them to go right back in the drawer again. So I have a friend right now, a client right now, who is saying, there's Christmas decorations mixed in with my clothes. First thing to do is separate the Christmas from the clothes and then separate the clothes into several piles in the Christmas decorations. I love these little flat sorting um, units. Um, they have them on sale right now at a lot of places. Remember, this is a good time. I know some of you are not listening to this in January because you're listening to the replay, but this is a great time to buy organizing, specific organizing things, not all of them, not just, oh, that's cunning. I think I'll buy that one. But these are drawers that pull out and they're about this deep, about so big, about 12 inches deep, maybe about two and a half inches deep um, in, in terms of deep depth. Um, I sort pictures in there. I still have a lot of pictures that have been printed. Um, if you're younger, you may not have this issue, but you have digital pictures all over your computer. They don't take up much space, though, but they still are organization. That's a different webinar, too. Um, I love these. I especially love the one on the right. Um, we'll talk about those boxes in just a little bit because I have some information about containers here. Paper Paperwork essentials. I love these poly, Project View folders. You can buy them at um, Office Depot. They have little corners on them, and you can see what's in them. I was given this tip by a friend who is an organizer, and it's been really, really wonderful for me. Um, save your place, because as I mentioned, you're going to get interrupted. So buy yourself some Post-its, and I'm sure you have Post-its in your house or somewhere. Please make sure they are super sticky Post-its, because let's face it, guys, the other ones just fall off. Super sticky post-its stick not on everything, but they stick on more things. And when you get interrupted, you want to put a sticky note on it, sticky on it, or post-it on it with a little note that says, this is where I am in this process. The next thing I'm going to do is fill in the blank. And if you can put down that next step, then you don't come back and go, oh, man, now what? I, I'm just going to throw this back in the original pile. And then you, you've wasted all that precious time that you actually were energized about organizing. And you're kind of back to, oh, here I am living in it again. So here's the get rid of stuff questions. What stops me from getting rid of, getting rid of stuff? One thing I can do to clear out stuff I don't, want to, don't need, want, or don't use is, and where or to whom will I donate, sell, give away, free cycle, all that stuff that's still usable but not part of my future? Good questions for you. Again, also in the handout. Number three, think once and then let it go and let it work. Think once. So what we do here is we create a brilliant organizing system because we are brilliant at doing this. And then, oh my gosh, it works. That system was the most brilliant thing I ever thought of. And then we get busy and distracted and overcommitted and careless and then the system falls apart. And then we say, well, what was I thinking? How, how could I even thought that was a good system? That's ridiculous. We got to start all over again. So we have to come up with another brilliant organizing system. And we create that one. And oh my gosh, it works too. And oh my gosh, then we get busy and distracted and et cetera. And it falls apart too. And then what in the world was I thinking? And then we have to throw the whole thing out and start. No. We do that again and again. How many, I'm, I'm asking you to raise your hands, even though I can't see you, but I'm seeing lots of hands raised out there. So remember that creating a system for yourself, an ADHD self, is all about creating ease and flow. So this is not like, ah, I have to do it, I have to keep it all together. Oh, instead, it's about, okay, I got this, I've thought about this carefully, 
and now I know where this stuff goes. So we're going to ask the important questions. I'm going to stay on this slide just a little bit here because these are important questions to ask yourself when you're deciding whether to keep something or whether you're going to use it and keep it in your life. Will I ever use it again? What will I use it for? Or why do I want to keep it? Is it the right size? Sometimes I've bought the giant size. I need the small size or vice versa. How often will I use it? Or how often do, will I enjoy seeing it? Just like my mom's clothes were hanging in my closet and I enjoyed seeing them when I go and put some of my clothes on. Um, where am I gonna use this? Where am I gonna look for it? And what didn't work last time with this? Why am I having to deal with this now? So what's my brilliant ADHD solution? I'm gonna give you an example. I had an issue with staplers. I could never find them. So the question is, will I ever use this again? Yes, of course. I want to keep this. What do I use it for? I use it for bills, copies, notes, letters. Is it the right size for me or for the job? Yes, it was the perfect size. It was not one of those gigantic ones. It was, and it wasn't one of those little teeny tiny ones, which make me crazy. It was just perfect. It was just right. So how often will I use it? I use the stapler almost every day. Where do I use it? I use it at my desk. I use it by the copier. I use it at the file cabinet when I'm trying to keep things together. I use it when I when I do my mail so I can staple um, pieces of invoices and things like that together. Where would I look for it? Well, near my desk or any of those other places. What didn't work last time? I didn't really have a specific place for this stapler. So what's my brilliant ADHD solution? I'm going to assign a place for this, and I'm also gonna have more than one because I need it in more than one place. I'm not gonna run up and down stairs. So this is my think once solution. I put one stapler in my revolving storage in the kitchen, near the bills and my mail and my printer upstairs. And then I put another stapler downstairs in my office near my copier and my printer. So that's what I mean by think once. I think once really, really hard. Okay, how am I gonna do this? What's, what's the best way to, to make this work? And then when I think about it, after I do it, notice that I put a labeler on it, a label on it, so I know that that's where the stapler goes. We'll talk about labels here in just a moment. But I now know that that stapler lives there. And my job is to put it away every time. It goes back there. It goes back there. It goes back there. So in all this process of thinking hard, sometimes it's hard to do by ourselves, so we might need a little help. We don't need somebody pushing us around and telling us what to do. So this is a picture of Erica the Great. She's my professional organizer whom I got a lot of my wonderful organizing tips from, although she said, I learn a lot from you. I said, then why am I paying you? You should be paying me. But um, you, you need somebody who's non-judgmental, and bless her heart, she is non-judgmental. If you have a friend who's willing to do that with you, Fabulous. That will be fat. Maybe you can do it for them as well, as long as you keep the judgment out of all this. You can also join an online organizing group. I'm starting one in a couple of weeks if you're interested. And you can also join a meetup group. There's messies and there's a lot of different organizing groups. Even ADHD groups may be interested in helping with organization. Or you can hire a coach or a professional organizer, as, as I just mentioned earlier. So here's the questions for your organizing system. What's the one situation or tangled knot that most needs my think hard solution? What would reduce my tension or frustration to create ease and flow? I can find that stapler. I don't have to go, where in the heck? I, can't, I, need, uh, I don't have to think. It doesn't drive my blood pressure up anymore. So number three, how can I accept help without, important, surrendering my position? You don't get to give up your ADHD in the face of somebody who says, well, this is the best way to do it. No, the best way to do it is the way that works for you. Number four, compartmentalize. And we'll talk a little bit more about the ADHD stuff in a minute. Re use creative corrals. So I'm talking about corrals for stuff. And we're going to go through these pretty quickly. But I say use anything that works for, for organization. These are pencil holders that I bought at Target. They're like three or four bucks a piece. They're cardboard. And I use them to put my glasses in because I'm at an age when I need readers. And I buy them cheap, you know, like four for a pack when I go to Costco and buy too much, right? Um, I go, I put them everywhere. So that, because the glasses were like scattered all over the place and I never knew where they, I, I never had some when I needed them. So I, I found these things and I absolutely love them. So that's again, back to that think once, what would fit that particular niche that I need? I um, use mineral veil makeup and I thought, I hate to throw these away. They don't really recycle. They're not the right kind of plastic. I wash them out carefully and I use them to put my, my um, med medication in. In this case, it was Adderall. Clutter-free handbags for all the women out there or even guys who use, um, who use you know, briefcases and, or bags and that kind of stuff. The more pockets, the better because then you can compartmentalize and then, then 
some people said, but I can't remember which pocket it goes in. That's about putting it away, putting it away, putting it away. I love snapware. Um, I, this is um, one of the cabinets in my office, and I'm so thrilled to tell you that it doesn't look like that right now, but it did then. I was so thrilled. But I also, as you notice, label them because they're individualized. So if, the more I can compartmentalize, the easier this to find things. So I have p small post-its in one box, and I have bigger post-its in another box. They aren't all mixed up when I need to find one. Oh, am I out of those? Yes, I should have got some more. This is the brand name of these storage bins, really useful storage bins. Um, this was created by an accountant in the UK who was looking for some kind of sturdy storage for his papers and his, and his well, anything that an accountant might use, maybe pencils, I don't know. Um, but he was frustrated that he couldn't find anything. He invented these, and then he licensed them to um, a company in the United States. So they're, made, they're manufactured in both the UK and the United States. Um, but they were licensed at first just to, I believe, believe it was um, staples, but now you can buy them almost anywhere. And they come in all kinds of sizes, from teeny tiny little ones to great, great big ones. They're not cheap, but they're an investment because they're nice, heavy plastic, and they really, really work. I wanted to show you an example of being organized. This is a desk drawer that I found in some you know, stock photo thing, and I thought, isn't that pretty? But let me tell you how impractical that is. It absolutely sucks because all those things, you're going to open the door and all those things are going to roll around, right? This is better, it's still a little too fussy. Rubbermaid drawer organizers are much, much better. I love them and they snap together. But please declutter first, then organize, then buy the containers. This thing looks really cool. I have one, worthless. Don't even go there. Sources for containers, Staples, Office Depot, you can even get some stuff at Costco, Snapware, you can buy things. Bed Bath & Beyond has some great sales right now. Um, inexpensive containers like TJ Maxx or this is in the United States, Michaels even, Target especially. Or you can do con container swapping, especially if you've bought too many. So the questions are what's running loose that needs to be compartmentalized? What containers do I have to corral all those things? And how can I make it mess proof as I showed you in that drawer? The next is my favorite, which is label everything. This is the most important thing my organizer ever taught me, and there is my most organ important organizing item. Notice that there are Rubbermaid organizing containers inside that drawer. Um, I have it labeled as that is the office one because I have more than one of these labelers because it's important for me. These are all labeled, um, the the emery boards, the the lip gloss, et cetera. Um, I'm just going to slip through trip these really quickly. I label the sugar goes here, the flour goes there. It really, really helps. Um, I even label under the shelves. These were really high, so I couldn't see on top to see those labels, so I put the labels underneath to see it. I put these on top because they were on the floor. So there's some of the things that I labeled in my pharmacy closet, if you will. The drawers are labeled inside. So there's my vegetable brush, and I, everybody knows where the openers go, and et cetera. And it's not just that I know where they are. It's where everybody else knows where they are. So my husband can say, oh, that's where it goes. Makes me very happy. Don't mess up my system once I get it in place. My makeup is labeled um, with colors, et cetera. And they can also give directions. Like I say, wet clothes left here can go in the dryer, but don't put anything else in the dryer because it's not going to be working. I, rem I label the remotes. I know this is not an organization thing, but it might help at least allow you to put them back. I even label my, this is on my bicycle, the tire inflation, because I don't want to have to get my magnifying glass out and see where all that stuff is. So labels are a big deal for me. Transformers and chargers, you can label those. Even a place for, I don't know what to do with this. So this happened to be for papers, but I actually have this file in my drawer. Sometimes it gets really fat, and usually I end up throwing that stuff away. So there are a couple labeling cues here. The best labeler for, me, for my money is the Brother P-Touch. You can usually find them at the big box stores. Um, buy a labeler that cuts automatically, not one that you have to push down on. It's just too much trouble. And you can save that the tape is what's expensive, not the labeler. Set the margins to small. You can see the difference in the large, um, the large margin versus the short margin. That saves a lot of money for you guys. So your label system is what do I lose or have to spend time figuring out over and over again, like which charger goes with which device, and then set a date. Set a date today to when you're going to buy a labeler or get out the one you already bought, which you probably have one, or ask for help to get started. Now we're going to organize for ADHD. I'm trying to watch the time here. This is one of the things. This actually was a picture of my office as well. But we don't want people messing with our piles, right? Step away from the piles and no one will get hurt. You got me? I want you to be able to mold these organizing solutions 
to you. And you know, you've heard that old saying that if you've met one person with ADHD, you've met one person with ADHD. We are all unique little flowers. But the truth is, is that our ADHD manifests in very, very different ways. So what works for me may not work for you. A piece of it might work or a piece of what you do may work for someone else with ADHD, but not all of it. So make sure that it is your solution. I think Wayne mentioned that at the beginning, that we need to do this ADHD friendly, if you will. Um, we want a system without obstacles. We don't want anything in our way because otherwise we're going to be distracted by it and we will be pulled off track. So we want to keep it visible. But you want to keep it kind of neat so that we know. I mean, sometimes having piles is okay as long as we know what's in them. This one says, I'm not disorganized. I know exactly where everything is. The new stuff is on top and the old stuff is on the bottom. Well, that's true. That's a little, that's not quite as specific as I'd like. We need to keep it real with our organizing. This is a fantasy. I mean, I think Maria Kondo has a great idea with, you know, everything being, you know, joyful, et cetera, and getting rid of and get rid of stuff till the, you know, you have two things left in your house. But this kind of stuff is just fantasy. This is more real. And even this isn't too bad. ADHD desks look a lot worse than this, as you saw mine. But what I like is he has post-its everywhere. He, his stuff is right behind him so he can reach it easily. Um, he's got all of his equipment in, in, within range. So, and he's got a whiteboard there as well. So it's not as messy as some of us. In fact, that we would, might consider this clean. But my point is it functions, that it functions for this guy, whoever he is. Convenience is the most important piece here. You don't put your toothbrush in the den. You put your toothbrush and your toothpaste and your razor, et cetera, right beside your sink. At least I hope you do that. And maybe you have more than one. I mean, that goes back to buying doubles again. Um, so convenience is the most important piece. You have, it, you have the stuff that you're using where you're using it, for heaven's sake. Don't forget, I love this little phrase, that files are piles turned sideways. And don't forget, notice how colorful they are. ADHD folks tend to really do well with lots of color in their life. However, um, well, we'll come to that in just a moment. Um, I want you to file your way. My organizer got crazy with me because she said, why are you putting your bicycle warranty in the same file as your life insurance policies? Because to me, a bicycle warranty is the same as a life insurance policy for a bicycle. That's the way my brain thinks, and that's the way I'm going to file. She, drives, she goes crazy because I don't alphabetize things, but I put them in orders of the way that I think about things and will look to find them again. When I'm thinking about it, okay, what was I thinking? Oh, I know that's the word I will look for when I go there next time. And I, I got these a little bit out of order, but when you create your filing system, write it down so you don't forget. So I use color coding. And this is the color coding system because when I first create it, it's still new and I'm not used to it yet. So I wrote it down, I printed it out, and I put it on the side of my file cabinet so that I could remember. And so could anyone else who comes into my office. Oh, they're looking for AD Diva stuff? It must be in a pink folder. Don't forget, I mean, I don't have to say this to you, but I will anyway, automate everything. And I don't just mean digitally. I don't just mean putting all your bills online. I mean automate everything in your head so that Mail goes in the drawer, mail goes in the drawer, mail goes in the drawer, my mail goes in the, the mail goes in the drawer, oh, the mail goes in the drawer. For me, it's not a drawer, but it's a, it's a round thing that where all the mail comes in. Everybody knows, if you get the mail, you put it in that little slot, and that's where the incoming mail is. When it gets really full, I know, whoops, I guess I need to take care of the mail. So here's your new organizing system for you, for your ADHD brain. Which ADHD ideas that already work for me can be used to get me organized? What makes sense to me? And how can I automate things to make life easier? And I'm going to go back and say, yes, some of that stuff is not just about your banking, but it's also about recurring um, purchases, um, dog food, baby food, uh, toilet paper. I mean, some of those, I have clients who have their toilet paper delivered from Costco every you know, two months or whatever it is. Um, birthday cards, um, refills for your for your um, medications. We can't do that with stimulants, of course, but we can do it with many other things. And if you have a, an online pharmacy, you can actually have those just sent until you need a new prescription. Last thing is put stuff away. And oh, this is just the worst. Tedium is the worst thing for us, right? If I had to sharpen all those pencils by hand, I would probably sharpen just about the, the number that are already done, three of them. So let's face it, it's boring to put stuff away. So, but you have to remember that looking for the same stuff again and again and again and again and again, that's also pretty boring. It also wastes a lot of our precious time, which we rarely have enough of time. So the average is that 
10 minutes a day is what most people, most people, I'm talking about not just ADHD, but most people spend. That's 60 hours a year that we spend looking for things. 23 weeks over your lifetime. And imagine ADHD folks spend probably easily twice that amount of time. That means you almost spend a year looking for things. You don't want to do that. That's a, a huge incentive because that's all we got. It takes less time to put away stuff. And, and you can spend all that time, you know, the time that you spent searching, you can be putting things away and feeling calmer about them. I remember ease and flow. Some people think we should have a planned junk drawer, a place that you can just stuff stuff. I disagree. I mean, some people say it's a junk room, right? Or it's a junk house or it's a junk storage or it's a building or whatever. I disagree because I think if you just start stuffing stuff in there, then you're you're thinking, well, I think it's in the junk drawer, but I'm not sure if it's in the junk drawer. I'd much rather you label stuff. If you have a junk drawer, at least divide it into this is the stuff that's junk for the kids' lunch supplies, and this is stuff that's, you know, I miss. It's the same as a miscellaneous folder, which never gets opened. And then you have to sort this stuff out. I'd rather sort it out just once to begin with. So you have a new perspective on this, but you have to make hard decisions. When clutter is gone from a surface, as it was from my island recently, I had to make a decision to keep it that way because my island collects everything. It means I had to spend more time. Oh, things are on my island. However, it was easier for me to see those things that I needed to put away. So questions are what stops me from putting away things I used to, I use or pull out or just kind of say, I'll do that later, or what destroys my good intentions. For example, I'm busy or I'm bored. I don't remember my new system. Sometimes we don't remember that we have to allow time to maintain organization. It's not just getting organized and, and that's it. We have to maintain that organization. So now what? I invite you to have a beginner's mind because I'll bet you anything that you felt very much like, yeah, I've been here before. I've done this. I've started over how many times now? But you've never started over now at this age, on this day. You've never started over with, with this particular amount of mess or clutter. You've never started over perhaps even in this house. You've never started over in this frame of mind or having seen this presentation. So allow yourself to have a beginner's mind means being open to new possibilities, even if they've been old possibilities. So start over, completely start over. Start with what drives you the absolute craziest. Is that pile over there just the, oh my, I keep tripping on it. This is dangerous. I need to fix that. I know I should fix that. I'm going to fix that. But remember, it's really hard to prioritize. But there's that pile over there. And oh my gosh, I need to clean out the attic. And oh, there's all those, look at that pile of shredding stuff I need to do because blah, blah, blah. All that stuff competes for our attention. The truth is we have to choose one. Choose one. Choose one. I know you're saying, but couldn't I just take two? No, not this time. Choose one. Because I guarantee you that other ones will come flooding in. This is think of many things, do only one. And, and if you are afraid you're going to forget those other things, write them down on your <laughs> to-do list, right? So you're saying commit to one, right? Really? Me? Yeah, actually, you can commit to one. And it feels like all of it's out there, so it all needs to be tackled at once, but the whole house is a mess. The whole office is a mess. The whole nursery is a mess. All of that stuff. And the truth is, is that you can only do one thing at a time. So you might as well just start with one because that's what's going to work. So you can slice and dice it to suit you. There's a twisted up carrot here. There's a diced carrot. There's a shredded carrot. There's a sliced carrot. Do it the way you need to do it. And then rinse and repeat. Go back to number two on the priority list. And, and while maintaining the other one, it's going to be slow at first. And, and I know it's really infuriating, but it really is true. You've got to add those other things gradually because you're trying to spin these plates. You're trying to get one going, and then you're going to add another one. And you're going to create small systems, and they'll gradually build on themselves. So this one's about mail and bills and how the budget goes in between. And eventually, you can do this. And I know it's like, oh, yeah, but I'll just knock down all those systems. But you won't if you use some of the suggestions I had, label things, maintain things, put things away, don't buy stuff. And your systems eventually are going to evolve over time because let's face it, we're not using the same, we're not using the same um, 
let me just start over and say that we're not we're, we don't need things at certain ages right i don't need things at age 20 that i need at age 40. i don't need things when i don't have children that i do when i do have children there are things that i need when i when i'm older that i didn't need when i was younger etc cetera, etc cetera. so you're going to they're going to evolve and you can re you kind of have to go through this process more than once so just really quickly i want you to embrace and expect breakdown because it's going to happen your clutter is lying in wait. You're going to get busy. It's going to happen again. So it's going to get, life is going to get out of control. You can expect a few shattered plates going, you know, falling down here. Maybe they're supposed to. Maybe they really didn't work. You got incoming all the time, not just mail, but other things as well. And you know, no time to deal with it, right? The spark is gone. It's like, whew, even the piles are stagnant. It's like, well, there's a pile, but I don't think there's anything important. And I don't even want to go there. Sometimes it's like, ooh, I want to dig into this. Now, even the piles get old. So I invite you to not give up hope. Keep pushing that ball up that steep hill, if you will, and rewind, think again, and go forward. Notice I did not say start over. That's because I don't want you to throw out all the baby with the bathwater stuff, as we were talking about before, all that circle about creating a new organizing system. Part of your organizing system is working. Your organizing system is working well enough for you to get on this webinar. You got here. Even if you were like, but I had to do this, there's no disclaimer. You got here. Eventually, ta-da, this is what my office looked like later. How about that? A big, huge difference. And you can even see the floor. And this was Karen's bedroom before. This was Karen's bedroom after. This was Karen's living room before when she'd ordered tons of stuff from Amazon. And this was her room, living room after. So look back on your answers to the previous questions. With new understandings, make a choice to start again, not start over, and allow yourself to simply be ready for this. It's okay. You can do it. I know overwhelm and everything. So you want some more resources? I've got some more online. Um, I post things up there fairly regularly. And as I mentioned, I'm having a, an organizing class getting started here. So um, I know we have time for questions. So I got through them. I got through yes, all those questions, Yes, you Wayne. did. I knew you would. <laughs> <laughs> that was excellent. Um, speaking yeah. of your organizing group, several people have yeah. asked, where should they go to, to sign up, to join? Oh, yeah. Go to addiva.net. And I think that if you go back to this previous slide there's a um there's a box on there that actually can you go back to the other slide let's oh, go back okay. to it. there's addiva.net get hyphen organized yep okay and it's just gonna and it's just gonna be four weeks but we're gonna talk about these exact things but we're gonna do them in more detail because we just can't do individual stuff right here and i and i wish we could that's why having an organizing seminar is frustrating because it's like i want to get in with in there with you guys so anyway go ahead what kind of questions have we got uh, that was one. Uh, there are plenty. Uh, one is about how do I find a professional organizer? This woman mm. has some hoarding issues. So okay. are there organizers for hoarders? Absolutely, or? there are. Yes, oh. there are. Um, the uh, the Institute for Chronic Disorganization, and I'm going to I'm going to pull the website up here in just a second, so I can give you the exact website. Um, first of all, NAPO, the National Organization of Professional Organizers, dot, I believe it's dot org, um, has people who are professional organizers who are wonderful at organizing, and that's where I found my organizer. Actually, I found her through my through my um, ADHD psychiatrist. So you may that may be a, a possible resource for you. But um, the Institute for Chronic Disorganization, or Challenging Disorganization, um, I'm, I'm quickly disorganization, I'm just quickly putting it up here just so I can get uh, get the website for you. I think it's, uh, here it is, challengingdisorganization.org. It's long, but it, it's that's actually the website. Um, the reason I recommend them is because they have experts in ADHD and they teach classes in ADHD and how to help ADHD folks organize. I was one of their keynote speakers for their conference one year. So I know they know ADHD and they also specifically work with hoarders as well. So it's a great resource if you can find one in your area. If you cannot, certainly use, as I mentioned, support groups, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you can certainly ask for word of mouth resources. Um, some people I've talked to have worked with organizers and the organizers try to come in and take over and, and tell them what to do. If they try to do that with you, fire them. Fire them. See, they didn't get a <laughs> refund either. I doubt it. <laughs> Several people have brought up uh, working with a friend yeah. and starting from square one with a friend yeah. and each one yeah. supporting the other or, and when yeah. one runs into a problem, perhaps the other one can solve it. What do you think of the buddy system? 
I think it's a great system. I, I, I love it. The, the only issue with this, and I ran accountability groups for a long time, and what I heard from people was that my accountability partner went on vacation. And because that's kind of what you're talking about. A buddy system is an accountability partner, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, and, and what happens is that sometimes um, one, of the, one or, or the other of the, of the people involved or, or of the group um, flakes out. And the other piece, so that's one, that's one potential pitfall. Um, the upside of that is that you're dealing with somebody, it may be somebody online. Um, the cool thing about being online is that even if they're in the same neighborhood, for heaven's sake, you can do this stuff online. You can use Zoom or you can use Skype or something like that, and you can organize together. You can go to each other's houses or offices or whatever. So I think it's a great idea. My only caveat, besides the first one about people flaking out, is please be sure that you don't get into advice giving. Please mm. don't tell someone else what to do. And you should be especially sensitive to that since you're an ADHD folk, you know, person yourself. Don't do it to them and don't let them do it to you. And if, you, if they do do that or if you find yourself doing it, you can say, oh, wait, you know what? I just realized I was giving you advice. What, what do you really need here? Or if they're doing it to you, you can say, I'm sorry, could you reframe that? Because that sounded an awful lot like advice giving and I and I thought we kind of agreed to not do that so can you just say that in a different way so that doesn't destroy the relationship and saying fine I'm taking my marbles and I'm going home mm -hmm. so it's it's a very it, it requires some relationship skills yeah. right uh, one woman when you were when you were addressing the whole clutter equals money thing look mm -hmm. that was money that's uh, one obstacle for a woman who, who because she spent the money doesn't want to give it up now give up Absolutely. the items so do you Absolutely. have any i guess it's i guess it all boils down to how much the clutter is driving you crazy well it, it you're right it's a balance right so it's it's partly um how much did i pay for it and how much how much is it really worth um and oh my gosh i feel so guilty about it so here's what i've done in, in one of my own little stories um i worked with my organizer and i'm like no no i you know i paid like a hundred dollars for that or whatever it was you know and i'm like you know i want to keep that purse or i want to keep whatever it is because and then two years later i'm looking at the same item saying oh it can go it's almost like it had to get ripe before i could get rid of it or something i don't know but it was mm -hmm. there was a point at which i said no it's not that important to me and i can let it go my suggestion is and i know this is not going to ever give you the value that you have spent already but there, uh, first of all, I want to say that there is a cost to clutter, a huge emotional cost. And there's even a cost physically. I mean, in terms of buying stuff to put it in. I mean, there's a cost to that, just as I mentioned with the storage units. But um, there are several ways to at least make that money back to a certain extent. One of them is to don donating them to a nonprofit will also will allow you to have a tax deduction if you itemize your taxes and fewer people do that these days but that's a possibility number two consignment if you're talking about clothing or furniture will also work doesn't usually work great for shoes unless they're brand new but i will tell you that i have some stuff that's brand new in the package and i couldn't return it and i'm going to consign it um, and the other thing is um you may i I hate to say this, but you can re-gift some of that stuff. And I'm not, I'm not talking about the fact that it was a gift to you. I'm talking about using it as a gift for someone else. So you, if it's possible, you can actually re-gift it. But I understand that kind of, oh, you got to be kidding me. I have this huge credit card bill for all the stuff I bought, and now it's just it's, it's become the word clutter. And I kind of go back to exactly what you were saying. There's a cost to this. There's a huge cost, an emotional and a, and a, a psychological cost to having all this stuff sitting around saying, feed me, feed me. I don't want to <laughs> feed you. Mm -hmm. This uh, one woman is living all alone. She's not married, no boyfriend or whatever. And her, mm -hmm. it, it, her apartment apparently is beyond, uh, she just can't even move around the apartment. She's mm -hmm. just saying, and, she sat on the sofa and she's overwhelmed and she doesn't know where to begin. Oh, a, wow. a lot of that, where to start, where to begin. Do you start Absolutely. with just one corner of a room? Do you have any? What's worked for you yeah, and others? I actually, I had some slides about this in here that I dropped because I was running out of time. Yeah. <laughs> so let's talk about where to start. Um, I think I, I, one of the slides I had was what drives you craziest. But you're, when you're sitting there looking at everything, when you have that much clutter and even you know on desks and papers and all that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. it's like it all blends together. It all becomes one object. 
So um, there's several several concepts that I've that I've heard people use. One of them is to use a, um, a like a paper towel holder and look through the paper towel after it's empty, of course, and just you just fit, work on exactly what you can see in that paper paper towel holder and in order because once you take the paper towel down you have you have all the stuff clearing it again so you have to kind of draw a line around it like maybe use tape or something like that but this is the area I'm going to clean I've even had people just clean one corner of their desk and that's all they did and I want to tell you that when we're in this state of overwhelm it's very very hard for ADHD folks to even move we feel paralyzed we just feel like I I, but I, I can't even hardly speak, right? right? I had a client who was finishing, her, and I know this sounds like not about ADH, about um, organization, but it is about getting started. I had a client who was working on her PhD, and she was having so much trouble fig- finishing her dissertation. She had books and papers and stuff everywhere, and she was just paralyzed. And our, her, her, her assignment for that day or her, that week was she was just to open one book. All she did was open. She wasn't supposed to do anything with it. And the same thing applies to organization. You pick up one piece of paper, you're ahead of where you were yesterday and the day before and the day before. So if you're sitting there and you can't walk and you stand up and what's right in front of you is blocking your way, pick that up first. And then put that decide what you have to do with it. Use the handout. Use the questions. Um, Am I going to keep it or I'm going to... Am I going to get rid of it? Am I going to donate it? I don't know what to do with it. I don't even know. I don't even have room to make a recycle pile with the recycle pile outside. But you got to keep these things compartmentalized. That's why I really, really danced on compartmentalization a lot. Even if it's a plastic bag, even if you say, I'm going to donate this or I'm going to trash this, it goes in a plastic bag and then it has a label on it, either a super sticky post-it or a piece of tape or something. And it's and then everything that you, you are able to keep everything together. Gradually, you're going to be able to take some of those things out of there. And first, it's not going to seem like much of a dent. I've been there. I know. It's like I've worked and worked and worked, and I can't even tell that anything has happened. That's when you take pictures. Take pictures before, just as Karen did. That will help because look what happened afterwards. She had some in-between pictures, but I didn't have time to show you all of the progression. But that really is how you do it, is you just start with one thing or maybe one category just as i mentioned about the christmas decorations and the clothes all right first we're just going to sort those that's all i'm doing and then i get to rest i get to you know sit down and watch tv or whatever else it is Mm -hmm. and then and you and you're sitting there watching tv saying well it didn't help much it's still the same piles it's still the same (laughs) yeah but you've done something so this is really kind of about getting your hope back this is about optimism and knowing that this can change Mm -hmm. okay cool What are your last question? What are your best tips? Because a lot of people have uh, this one woman says, I can organize my closet. I've organized my kitchen, but I struggle very much with paper, utility bills, bank statements and all correspondence. Boxes and boxes are under my beds, Mm -hmm. under my kitchen table. So I I know you've mentioned paper. Is there Mm -hmm. could you? Just sort of address that topic real quickly and, 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 uh, and maybe give your best tip. Really quickly, two. right? Really yeah. quickly. That's only, that's only a whole webinar all by itself or maybe several right. webinars. Um, so first of all, um, you don't, I just want to just address a utility bill. First of all, that stuff can all be online. You don't have to be getting utility bills. And I don't do that with everything, but I do it with a lot of things because utility bills, unless you are saving them for tax receipts, if you have a rental house or something like that, um, you don't need to keep them year to year. I keep one year's worth of utility bills and I pitch them. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. nobody's going to nobody's gonna pay your utility bill for you. Paper is difficult in that um, it it's, it piles up and then and, and there's no differentiation in it. One white piece right. of paper looks like another when you can't see it in the pile, right? Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. I will tell you one of the things that Kathleen Nadeau, who co-authored with Judith Kohlberg the book um, ADHD Friendly Ways to Organize Your Life, um, she wrote a book, and I, I've never forgotten this. She wrote a book, and she had papers everywhere. And she's ADHD, just like we are. And she's made a decision that every time she walked into her office, she was going to put away 10 pieces of paper. And eventually, not overnight, but eventually she had all that paper either filed, recycled, or discarded. So it's the same thing with you. If you have, first of all, you don't deal with stuff under the bed. You deal with the stuff that's on top first, and then you can gradually, and and keep in mind, you deal with the stuff that's on top, which is the current stuff, 
and then you create a system for dealing with the paper as it comes in, that incoming stuff, so that it goes mm -hmm. into a file, it goes into this, mm -hmm. it goes into that, that file is going this way instead of on the bottom, instead of flat, and then once that system, you're able to maintain that for a while, and after you eventually get some of this stuff done online, you then tackle the boxes under the bed one at a time in very much the same way about how do I get started. So I know right. people are drowning in paper and and it seems silly in a digital age that we have this much paper and yet paper, you know, clutter used to be money, but paper used to be trees and I like trees. So I think we should protect <laughs> them. Yeah. Well, we'll have to end it there. That was great, Linda. <laughs> really, that was really great and entertaining.